Last year, the Biden administration said it would pay to help move five Native American tribes from coastlines and rivers where waters are rising due to climate change. Special correspondent Megan Thompson reports on an earlier relocation effort in Louisiana that led to some unexpected complications. Well, it's the only place that ever known as home. This is where my whole life experiences are. For almost all of his 58 years, Chris Brunet lived in one place, Ile de Jean Charles, a sliver of an island on Louisiana's Gulf Coast. Brunet is also tied to this land through his ancestry. He's a member of the Jean Charles Choctaw Nation. We are one with the island and the island is one with us. The tribe traces its roots to a Native American woman who settled here with her French husband in the early 1800s. Their children married people from nearby indigenous tribes and the community eventually grew to around 400. Reverend Rock Nakin is Chris Brunet's uncle. Over his 90 years, he's seen the island change dramatically. When I was little, I didn't see any water on the land. Everything was dry all the time. Back then, Ile de Jean Charles was about five miles wide. Today, it's only about a quarter mile wide. There are many reasons for that. Sea levels are rising, while at the same time, the land beneath Louisiana's coast is sinking. Thousands of canals used by oil and gas companies have made erosion worse, and Mississippi River levees block sediment from naturally restoring the wetlands. All this as increasingly intense hurricanes pound the coast. And we are still here. When the News Hour first met Chris Brunet in 2012, his house looked like this. This is his home today. In 2021, Hurricane Ida ripped off a corner of the house and damaged the elevator. Next door, Ida's winds destroyed his uncle's roof. I lost about everything. Over the years, flooding and storms drove residents away, and the island's population dwindled to only a few dozen, mostly Native American. For tribal leadership, the writing was on the wall. Deme Nakin is the new chief of the Jean Charles Choctaw Nation. So they came up with a plan, they had a good plan, to move as a community, move everyone together. In the early 2000s, tribal leadership began planning a new community to reunite the scattered tribe at a new location 40 miles north and, most importantly, 10 to 12 feet above sea level. The goal was to bring everyone back together. The tribe partnered with a nonprofit and the state of Louisiana to apply for funding. Then, in 2016, big news. The Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development awarded Louisiana $48 million for the first federally funded relocation of a community because of climate change. After six years of planning and construction, families began to move in last year. Come on in. They're calling the community the New Isle. On a winding road of modest homes, 34 families have moved in so far. Three more are expected to arrive this year. This room is eventually is going to be a prayer room. Reverend Nakin lives in a two-bedroom, two-bath, and was able to choose the layout and paint colors. I love the house. I tell people this is the most luxurious house that uh, I ever lived in. <laughs> Nakan lives next door to his nephew, just like before. Hey, boy, how you doing? Chris, okay. For Chris Brunet, leaving the only home he's known has taken some getting used to. I'm grateful that a house was built. I'm grateful for that. It's home because I'm surrounded by the people I've known my whole life, but it's still not all the way home. It's absolutely an innovative approach to adapting to climate change. Pat Forbes runs the Louisiana State Office of Community Development. Because the Jean Charles Choctaw Nation doesn't have federal recognition, Forbes' office received the money and oversaw the project. One of the most important lessons we learned was that you have to talk to people on a personal, individual level to understand where they're coming from and what their priorities are. Residents told him they wanted a community center, so one is being finished now. Another example, the houses here don't need to be on stilts, but Forbes learned the space underneath homes on Ile de Jean Charles often functioned as a place to gather. Now you'll see every single house has a covered outdoor space. The houses were also designed to withstand hurricane force winds. The windows are all double paned. There is an extra layer of impermeable covering between the shingles and the roof. But for some residents like Chris Brunet, who's on disability because of cerebral palsy, the
these extra features create an unexpected problem. The value of his new home is higher than his last one, so property taxes and insurance will also be higher. How can you put me in, in a position that, that requires me to, to afford more than what I can afford if this year is about climate change? The long-term success of this whole experiment depends on people's being able to afford to live here for the long term. Forbes says this future marketplace could help by creating jobs and generating rent revenue to offset the higher costs. So could a proposed health clinic or other commercial projects, but there's no concrete solution yet. Though this might look like a success story, the leadership of the Jean-Charles Choctaw Nation doesn't see it that way. Once the funding was issued, the tribe had nothing to do with it. The tribe had no say so. And it's, it's like they stole it from us. The chief at the time wrote a letter to HUD calling for the grant money to be returned, saying the project was no longer for and led by the tribe. What this project was supposed to be was to be for the tribe, and it was supposed to be keep our heritage, culture, all in one spot. What we found when we started interviewing folks on the island was that not everybody on the island is part of the tribe. We couldn't say, we're going to put all the decision-making authority with the tribe. Forbes says they couldn't build homes for people who'd left the island long ago because the federal money was from a disaster resilience program related to Hurricane Isaac in 2012. So only current residents and people who'd lived there when Isaac hit qualified. Do I wish that uh, the tribe would work more closely with us to bring more people back here who used to live on the island? Absolutely. The state's offering free plots of land to anyone who left before 2012. 27 families have signed up so far, but the building costs will ultimately fall on them. The state also offered to sell the tribe a parcel of land, but Chief Nakan questions why the tribe should pay after it helped secure the grant that bought the land in the first place. It was supposed to have been a, a model to the rest of the world. It hasn't happened. There are different ways of looking at it optimistically. There are different ways of looking at it negatively. Chris Brunet feels his community has been preserved because he's still surrounded by his neighbors from Ile de Jean Charles. The island is mostly deserted now, but Brunet was allowed to keep his property, so he visits as often as he can. To his new home, he brought a big tub of the marsh grass that grows in the shallow waters off the island. Because it reminds me of what I come from. And then also, it's resiliency to want to grow, to want to come back. Far from home, but still able to thrive. For PBS News Weekend, I'm Megan Thompson in Gray, Louisiana.